as a guitarist, there's so much gear out there that it can be really be overwhelming in the beginning when you're trying to piece together a rig, you know, and you're trying to decide what you do need and what you don't need. Over the last 10 years, there's one piece of equipment that has never left my pedal board, and it's been one of my best investments, and that's just a volume pedal. They can be found pretty cheap. Uh, so in this video, I want to skip all the practical uses of volume pedals, and I just want to share with you three different ways that you might find a use of a volume pedal for. So the first way is that you can actually use a volume pedal as an expression. Now there's just two things you need to keep in mind here. Uh, and number one is that your volume pedal needs to be a passive design, so there's no active electronics or buffers in it, doesn't take power at all. And number two, that your expression pedal, or sorry, the pedal that you're going to be expressioning, needs to be expecting to see a TRS input. The cable that you're going to need to connect this now is not a normal expression pedal cable, but instead a TRS Y cable, and I'll leave a link in the description. This is made by EBS. It's durable, affordable, and super low profile. So a, a TRS Y cable is just one that starts out with a TRS jack, and then it splits to two mono cables at the other end. The TRS is fed into, in this case, the electroharmonics pitchfork. Uh, and then each of these is going to be fed into the input and output of the volume pedal. And this is a great pitch shifting pedal uh, that is, it's got a fantastic tone, but it can really benefit from the expandability of an expression. And with an expression, it almost fulfills the Digitech whammy sort of role. So let's listen to it. Now the second way we can use a volume pedal that you might not be aware of is that you can actually plug, and this is, by the way, the same thing basically just in a little different enclosure, uh, you can plug a volume pedal into the effects loop of a clean amp and then you can use that as a master volume. Now your volume, which uh, was normally your, your volume on the, on the amp, that is now acting as a gain control. So crank that up to taste and then you can use this to adjust the overall output of the amp to an acceptable volume. And this is great. I found a lot of use for this when I was gigging with the Blues Deluxe over there a lot. Those amps notoriously have a terrible overdrive channel. So instead, I would actually use a little volume in the effects loop and I would crank the input on the, uh, as the normal volume. And now I'm getting the overdrive from the preamp tubes in the clean channel, which is giving me that nice edge of breakup, classic tweed amp sound. Um, and then this is acting as a master volume to adjust the overall output of the amp into an acceptable level. So let's listen to how that might sound. <laughs> final tip I have to share with you if you're using a volume pedal already in your rig is just to experiment with the different places that you can place it between different pedals and whatnot. Um, and you might have had a question, why would I want to use a volume pedal if I already have a volume knob on my guitar? Well, the fact is, if you're playing into an overdriven amp or a gain pedal, when you adjust the volume on your guitar, you're changing the input level being fed into this pedal that's already compressing the signal. So instead of changing the actual output volume, you're going to be changing the quality of overdrive or the amount of overdrive. By placing a volume pedal after that gain pedal, now we're able to not affect the quality of overdrive. We can keep that massive intensity that we have with the full volume of the guitar and then just lower the output level just a little bit. And this works uh, kind of in the same way that we just did in the last example. Uh, but to go along with this, you can also just experiment by placing it, for example, after all your wet effects. Um, so if you've got a lot of complex reverbs or bouncy delays, you know, play what you need to keep the volume down. And then once you're done, swell into it and all of a sudden you've just got this wall of sound that no one was expecting to hear. Uh, so there's a lot of different places you can use a volume pedal in your rig. Let's listen to a couple of them.
wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. I just want to share with you a couple of the different options that we have out there for volume pedals. Uh, the one that I've been using in this video, this is the Dunlop High Gain. It's discontinued now, but you can find them on Reverb for 40 bucks. They're really cheap. It's in the Crybaby enclosure, It's so it's heavy, it's bulky, and it's going to take up a lot of real estate on your board, uh, but it's super reliable, and this was my first one, and still, I think, one of the best designs. The little one that I was using, this is made by a lot of different companies, uh, this specific one here is T1M, I'm not sure what that stands for, but you can find them made by Saturn Works, or if you type in just compact volume pedal on reverb. I'm sure you'll find a lot of different options. It's a very simple thing to make if you want to try it yourself. It's just an input jack wired to a potentiometer to an output. Anyone can make that. The one that I've personally been using a lot, and uh, this is actually the expression pedal version. It's the Boss 30 series. So the volume is gray, the expression is blue, and then I think there's one more. Um, but it's a really nice size. It's full metal. It's not too heavy, so it's not going to be adding a lot of weight to your pedal board. The expression particularly has a lot of different ways that you can use it. So this is like, if you have a lot of different pedals that are expecting different types of expression signal, this will pretty much cover everything. Uh, the Boss 30 series I think is a great design and I've used it a lot. It hasn't let me down yet. Now, ones that uh, I don't have, I don't have experience using personally, but that might be a great option. Uh, this would be the Dunlop DVP-4. Uh, Dunlop volume pedals what DVP stands for and this is they have a larger version which is about the same size a little bit more slim though and the outputs are on the top which is nice and then they also have a mini version as well and I've heard great things about both of those they have a tuner output on it and they're passive so they would work for everything that I've mentioned in this video ones that I would stay away from uh, currently there's a sale of DOD pedals I've talked about that in the past on my channel I would not get the DOD expression I've heard a lot of people had it break on them after a month or a week even of use. It's just not a reliable piece. And this uh, Bloomery, a very expensive one, a great idea, just very poorly executed in my opinion. This is a very expensive paperweight to me now. Um, it's broken and there's there's just so many poor things done with it, it's not even worth looking into. Um, so anyway, there's my recommendation on which pedals to look into and which ones to, you know, totally forget about entirely. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, if you learned something, make sure you hit the subscription button and the like. I do videos like this all the time and maybe share it with a friend as well if you know someone that might benefit from the information in this video. So thank you for watching. I appreciate your time and I'll catch you in the next one.